Tax reform, our changing economy, education, crime, and the environment. Discussing the issues that matter in depth and with personality. A new studio, a new look, for a new season. That's Let's Talk. Live Mondays at 8 p.m. on ZBM TV 9 and repeated at 7 a.m. on Wednesdays and Sundays at 8 a.m. You can count on us. Value packed fresh Purdue chicken thighs or drumsticks, only $1.99 per pound. Save $1.40 on Bermuda grown cauliflower, $2.59 per pound. Save $1.36 on Schmidt old time sliced butter bread, $4.59 for a 24 ounce loaf. General Mills Honey Nut Cheerios, 10.8 ounce box, only $4.59. New Fresh Pet Pet Food, 20% off on all sizes and varieties. All stores open Monday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. You can count on You're watching Bermuda Tonight. It's Wednesday, January 30th. I'm Jasmine Patterson, and thanks for joining us. No holds barred as Zane De Silva responds to Leah Scott, the deputy leader of the opposition OBA. Ms. Scott took the minister to task over the continued lack of a new roster for bus operators. But as Gary Moreno tells us, Mr. De Silva simply isn't having it. He may have been wearing pink, but there was nothing playful or romantic in the response from Mr. De Silva to Ms. Scott's criticisms. The minister fired up over what he viewed as the failure of Ms. Scott and the former OBA government to effectively address the problem which he agrees existed before their time in office, but which he argues they did precious little to fix. I didn't hear not once uh, MP Leah Scott talking about the bus schedules. Not once in five years. And this is a person that says she doesn't want to politicize anything. Well, if you don't want to politicize anything, she hasn't called me. She hasn't called the director of, of DPT, Mr. Roger Tort. So what is she trying to accomplish? Mr. De Silva feels the opposition deputy leader was being disingenuous in her criticisms because she would know how involved developing the new roster is given the technical nature of the exercise. It includes logarithms, it includes routes, it includes scheduling. Uh, you have to take into account a host, a myriad of things when you work out these schedules. The good thing is, Gary, is that when they talk about consultants, they had the same consultant for five years. All of a sudden, now it's a big issue. So what happens now where the consultant is concerned as it relates to their involvement developing these rosters? We'll continue to use them, but less and less. And my goal, Gary, I can lay down this marker. My goal is to eliminate that consultant, because I believe that under Mr. Brent Harvey and his team, they can get the schedules and rosters done in the future. So let me lay down that marker. So we will no longer have to worry about that. The Bermudian team alluded to by Mr. De Silva includes Brent Harvey, Fabian Bullen, Ty Williams and Warren Simmons. Gary Moreno reporting for the Bermuda Broadcasting News. Meanwhile, Mr. De Silva equally strident in his position with regard to suggestions that he was being hypocritical in his comments during the roof wedding ceremony for the new terminal building at the Ellif Wade International Airport. That was a bad deal then and my position and the Progressive, progressive Labour Party's position has not changed. Let me make that very clear. So what we, has changed? Well, what has changed is you have a new government. And I am the minister. And let's, let's point out a few things here. You know the name of that airport, Gary? It's L.F. Wade, International Bermuda International Airport. Okay? That's our airport, named after our former leader. I talked to the widow of Freddie Wade. And she said, Zane, it would be really, really nice to have you there. Because quite frankly, we had a, had a little discussion about whether or not we would be in attendance. So on behalf of the Wade family, on behalf of all the Bermudian workers down at that site, I think I had good reason to be there. But let me lay down that mark and make it very clear. We're still not happy with that deal. People were pepper sprayed, pepper sprayed Gary. Our people were pepper sprayed over that airport. We had a shutdown of Parliament over that airport deal. Let me make it very clear. There's no love fest between the PLP and ACORN. No love fest whatsoever. 
Bermuda Industrial Union President Chris Ferbert has criticized the opposition leader Craig Kenanier's assertion that the PLP government was being hypocritical in their support of the Ella Wade International Airport redevelopment at a recent ceremony. Mr. Ferbert argues that projects are started and completed under different administrations quite often. Mr. Kenanier and the Wamba Bermuda Alliance and some of the other people in me will have you believe that you know we've been always been against the airport project. We've always been against the cost of the new airport project. So now, you know, because it looks like, we're, you know, we're, we're going to get a, a finished project, a product, we should figure out about everything else that's going on. The way how they put this deal together, we can't forget about December 2nd, 2016, how people were pepper sprayed. We can't, can't, can't forget how they, this is my description, how in 2017, like these in the night, they got into the House of Assembly to pass this bill. And that's a fact as to what they've done. And now you're trying to play it off like, oh, well, the PLP are uh, like a bunch of hypocrites now because the minister was down there for the, for the roof bed and what I, well, let's just rewind the clock back a little bit. Because I, my understanding was that the hospital project was started on the PLP government. It concluded under the EBA government. And I knew that the minister, the shadow minister there, Bob Richards had, had some issues about the PPP for the hospital project. But two years later, his government's done there with the, for the roof, for the roof garden or the, or the opening ceremonies for the hospital. So we have to be very careful how, you know, we to use this tongue-in-cheek thing that the former premier was trying to play that we've got some, some you know, hypocrites going on around it because who's more hypocritical than, than the opposition leader? Who? When we talk about Jack Gate, when we talk about all the things that he is involved in as a former premier of this country, but people want to give him a pass, even the media. You all give him a pass. Nobody took him to task on what he was saying. BIU President Chris Ferbert. We'll have more for you after this short break, including all the latest weather news. Stay with us. Toyota Rush, Bermuda's biggest SUV with seven seats. There's always plenty of room. Available at Bermuda Motors. Price Rate is your one-stop shop with something for everyone. Household goods for kitchen, bedroom, and bathroom. Aisles of bulk groceries at value prices. A complete selection of fresh meat and produce. And an extensive range of frozen items to cover every meal. Wines from around the world and beer and liquor at discount prices. Visit Price Right at our two locations in Pembroke and Warren. There's always something new and always something for everyone. At Argus, our interest is you. Each of you, around here, we know that when two people seem the same, they can have very different insurance needs for their health, home, work, and future. Which is why we take the time to get to know you as an individual, so we can provide insurance coverage that fits your life. Because after all, our interest is you. The core of Smart Security's business is providing customers with burglar, fire, CCTV, and other essential alarm services. An important and growing market that offers you the best of all worlds, state-of-the-art protection technology, and monitor your system 24 hours a day, every day of the year, offering you that peace of mind knowing everything you care about is safe and secure. Technology allows residential and business customers to access information and to control their security systems remotely. For more information, call Smart Security Systems at 292-4019 or visit their website, smartsecuritysystems.vm. And thanks for staying with us. Our story last night on an apparent rise in illegal trash dumping at public locations around the island appears to have raised awareness of the long-held problem. The story featured video and comments from environmentalist Jessica Redeerer, who first posted the images to social media. One of those watching last night's newscast was the public works minister himself, Colonel David Birch. Um, but they are a minority. 
the vast majority of folk in this country, I do think pr take pride, and they probably don't even realize it in terms of taking pride in, in, the, in the country as a whole. They're taking pride in their own neighborhood, so by extension, the country is taken care of. Um, I am very disappointed that people are using all manner of means to dispose of their trash. We've done a number of things, and we'll do some more, and I'll announce those on Friday, how we can help folk to be able to manage what is a slightly different situation. But in the main, I guess what I, what I would, really would like to say, I actually saw your news, um, and so I'll thank ZBM for putting it on burn news, because those of us that don't get home at seven are able to watch it whenever we like. And I try and do that every day so that I'm somewhat current. But I was very encouraged by the comments of the lady who you had on your news who actually took personal responsibility, and that's what we would like everybody in this country to do. And government today showing it's serious with efforts to cut costs and reduce waste by showcasing a new government office space that is designed to fit more employees into working environments. However, the new concept will result in a reduction in office space for all civil servants, including permanent secretaries and even ministers. Tri Trot reports the concept came about after it was decided that the old office layouts were inefficient. Trendy new government office space to accommodate more civil servants, resulting in greater efficiency and cost savings. According to the Public Works Minister Colonel David Birch, it's a type of office space the government is hoping to expand to other departments after the cabinet approved revised space standards for government offices. The media were invited to the first department to receive an office space upgrade, the Estates Department, on the third floor of the Government Administration Building on Parliament Street. As part of the Public Service Reform Initiative, cabinet also considered a number of issues in respect of asset management, one of which was the need to ensure that a consistent approach is adopted in the layout, design, finishes and furnishings of government office accommodations. Minister Birch noting that the existing government office space standards have not changed over decades and are now considered to be overly generous. He described current office space layouts as inefficient when compared to more modern, flexible and collaborative working environments that are common in the private sector. With private sector rents of approximately $8.9 million annually, savings can be had by more efficient use of space both within government-owned buildings and those rented from the private sector. The new government office space standards reduces the space for a minister to 200 square feet, down from 300. It reduces the office space for a permanent secretary to 150 square feet, down from 250, and calls for 100 square feet for a director, down from 150. The minister recognizes that some government departments are special and require larger office space. Those departments will be reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. He also reveals that there was resistance within the civil service to the new space standards. Not surprisingly, within the civil service, we have had some resistance to this new policy. The lead entity in delivering this message, the Estates Department, is setting the example by being the first department to transition to an open floor plan that also sees the chief surveyor, who is entitled to an office, and his management team occupy desks on the office floor. Around us, you will see photographs of the space as it existed prior to these renovations. You will readily see the new space is bright, with a significant amount of natural light that affords officers the ability to easily collaborate with each other on various aspects of their work. Within the Estates Department alone, the old office layout could accommodate 15 staff members, but with the new design, it can fit 23 employees comfortably. Plans are in the works to expand the concept to the remainder of the estate's floor and gradually transition other departments. Going forward, the minister points out that this will be the standard. Tarai Trot reporting for Bermuda Broadcasting News. Thanks, Tarai. Looking at our weather picture, high pressure will dominate, resulting in fair skies with light to moderate winds. However, a front passing to our north tonight will result in cloudier conditions with perhaps an odd light shower early tomorrow morning. Cooler conditions will arrive into tomorrow with temperatures expected to be below the seasonal average before a slow warming occurs over the weekend. According to the Bermuda Weather Service, you can expect partly cloudy conditions tonight, turning to mostly cloudy late night tonight. Expect a low of 65 degrees.
degrees. For tomorrow, Thursday, expect sunny periods with a high of 68 and a low of 59. And for Friday, expect similar conditions with a high temperature of 64 and a low of 57 degrees. We apologize as our nightly AccuWeather forecast is unavailable due to technical issues. We'll be back after this short break. This summer I was in Germany on holiday with my family and on a whim one day my son and I joined a speed sliding competition and as I came down the water slide I went straight down in the pool and whacked my left foot on the bottom of the pool and I looked down and I didn't see a foot. I just saw the bones sticking out and I started to feel faint. I was ambulanced to a hospital where I stayed for 11 days and had surgery. I had snapped all the ligaments on both sides of my ankle. And in the middle of all this stress and pain, we thought, how are we gonna deal with health insurance? How will we pay for this? And I got a response from Allison at BFNM and she said, your admission and surgery will be covered at 100%. I didn't have to put it on a credit card and deal with the reimbursement later. It made such a big difference to us. And for me, the BFNM difference is stress-free insurance when I really needed it. At the Bermuda Festival, civil rights take center stage in January. Singer-activist Nina Simone believed an artist's responsibility is to reflect the times. Set against the framework of one of her most blistering songs, the play Nina Simone, Four Women, gives voice to four women who suffered from self-hatred due to the different hues of their skin. The production includes some of Nina Simone's most popular civil rights anthems. For tickets, visit PTIX or BermudaFestival.org. 44th Annual Bermuda Festival. Meet Cal. Cal is a consumer. Just a year ago, Cal didn't know much about industry regulation or why it even mattered. Then Cal went to a town hall meeting, read the flyer sent to his house, and looked at the regulatory authority's new website. He even did some research on his own. Now he can see how regulating electricity protects consumers and ensures our power supply is safe, reliable, and sustainable. And he knows more about the regulations that improve the overall service of Bermuda's phone, internet, and cable companies. And there's more to look forward to. In 2019, the authority will share information on important matters like the cost of electricity, consumer protection regulations, and net neutrality, also known as open internet. You too can start learning today at the Authority's website and stay up to date with all that we're doing on our Facebook page. For 2019, the Regulatory Authority wishes you a safe, happy, and well-informed year. JBM Realty & Associates services all your real estate needs. Our agents have years of real estate experience specializing in selling of properties, renting of properties, property management, vacation rental. So whether you're looking to move to another location, selling your home, purchasing a new home, or a landlord looking for assistance in managing your property, give us a call today. One of our experienced agents will be more than willing to assist you with all your housing needs. Call us on 234-2050 or visit our website, jbmrealtyandassociates.com. Let's Talk is back. The TV talk show hosted by Gary Marino airs live at 8 p.m. on Mondays. Real conversations with key figures in public life. Going beyond the sound bites to explore and contextualize current affairs. And there's lots to talk about. Jobs, tax reform, our changing economy, education, crime, and the environment. Discussing the issues that matter in depth and with personality. A new studio, a new look, or a new season. That's Let's Talk. Live Mondays at 8 p.m. on ZBM TV 9 and repeated at 7 a.m. on Wednesdays and Sundays at 8 a.m. Health Minister Kim Wilson today publicly weighing in over the separation of employment of Tawana Wedderburn as CEO of the Bermuda Health Council. Mrs. Wedderburn's husband had issued a statement to the media making allegations over her departure from the council. Minister Wilson, in a written statement tonight, says she is re restating her remarks that this matter is not open for discussion through the media. She says this is a matter for the health council to deal with directly with any affected party. She asks for the privacy of all those involved to be respected. Ms. Wilson, however, clarifies that she considered the recommendation to remove Mrs. Wedderburn and came to her decision independently and without pressure. She notes that her decision was also in accordance with the law. 
Well, rental income is said to be a great source of revenue for homeowners in Bermuda. Now, new taxes are said to likely be part of the upcoming 2019-2020 budget, with residential rental tax being one of them. Well, we took to Reed Street in Hamilton to ask the public for their thoughts, in particular on the possibility of tax on rental income. Well, we need money. The, the Bermuda government needs money. And if that's the only thing that has not been taxed, then something moderate. I'll be affected by it too. You don't mind? As long as it's moderate, I don't mind. I don't think it's been thought out very well. Um, I think putting a tax on gross income is, is, well, I don't know anywhere else that does it. Normally, um, what you would do in, a, in any jurisdiction that had a proper tax structure, you would, uh, you would work more on a, on a, a net value after uh, mortgage costs, banking costs, that sort of thing, uh, just to take a, a gross, a number off a gross figure. Um, is a really bad idea. To be imposing that on people when they're struggling already is too much. You know, rents are high as it is. And you're trying to get control over the food and everything. How are you going to put that on top of everything else? You know, with the struggling people and the people that have lost their houses already, this is not no time to be putting taxes on that, no. We asked the executive director of Age Concern, Dr. Claudette Fleming, for her initial reaction on the proposed residential tax and what impact it could have on senior citizens. However, she stated that the charity is planning to meet with the finance minister for clarification on the matter before commenting to media. Still to come, Earl Basin will have all the latest sports news in just a few minutes. For your guacamole dip, avocados just $1.99 each. Save $6 on cooking good chicken wingets, $19.99 for a five pound bag. Hot deal on DiGiorno 12 inch pizzas, only $7.99. Save $1.40 on Lay's potato chips, $2.99 for a 6.5 ounce bag. For party dipping, Tostitos salsa or Lay's dips, $3.69 for a 15.5 ounce jar. Visit our website at www.marketplace.pm for more Super Bowl specials. You can count on us. We are the voices. You are with the captain. It's Mr. Midday. 12 new major news. The big station. The morning show. The number one song. The faces. You're watching Bermuda tonight. This is exactly what you're talking about. What an upset it was. The storytellers. They are actually using the pepper spray. Police are aware of this theory. The water is three and a half thousand meters deep. The tax climbs up to 12 and a half percent. The window on our community. We bring you the best in U.S. television entertainment and the greatest sporting events in the world. A brilliant performance of Duffy. We are the island's only Bermudian-owned broadcaster of both television and radio. With the only TV channels that are available over the air in beautiful high definition, completely free. We are always expanding. We are always innovating. And most important, we're always your station. This is Bermuda Broadcasting. Sport now and Bermuda sailors struggled on day one of the Hempel World Cup sailing series in Miami. Janai Parenchief made his first appearance in the Texas Tech uniform. And South African Olympian brings a message of hope to Bermuda swimmers. Earl Basin has the details and more in tonight's sports report. Bermuda Sailors, CC and Mikey Woman, as well as Ben Smith, are struggling after day one of the Hempel World Cup Sailing Series going on in Miami. Smith came off the water after two races in 76th place in a fleet of 101 sailors. Smith would finish the first race of the day in 48th. He would then finish 28th in the second race of the day to finish with 76 points. In a fleet of 27 sailors, the Womans ended the day in 26th place with 73 points. The Womans would finish the first race of the day in 24th before finishing 21st in the second race of the day. In the third and final race of the day, the Womans were handed a disqualification under Rule 30.3. In his first appearance in a Texas Tech uniform, Janai Parenchief competed in the 2019 Texas Tech Classic hosted by Texas Tech University at the Sports Performance Center in Texas. Parenchief finished seventh in the men's high jump. Parenchief would finish with a top leap of 2.08 meters or 6 feet 9 inches. 
Five-time Olympian Ronald Schumann from South Africa is in Bermuda hosting a swimming camp. Through his struggles of starting out, Schumann hopes to influence some of the youngsters. I see this as an opportunity. I, I didn't have many people to look up to, and I didn't have anybody in South Africa that really came out and helped me get better. It was all knowledge, so it is all knowledge that I've acquired over the years of just you know, researching and figuring things out. Um, you know, the youngsters of today are so lucky that they have their cell phones, have you know, knowledge, expertise at the fingertips. And, and for me, it was about 20 years, a culmination of, of literally 20 years of learning and growing and trying to understand the sport and especially my start and, and turn a little bit better. So it's, I think I'm the four, 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 you know, foremost expert in, in starts in the world kind of thing. And it, so to be able to come in and, and share that really it is pretty powerful for me and, and, and just to share my insights I wish I'd had something like that so for me it's important to be able to you know in turn do that and I know a guy like Julian and you know, Roy Birch and you guys have a history of, of successful swimmers so why not read more why, why swimming for you well I started swimming uh, when I was 14 to impress a girl so <laughs> swimming kind of chose me but it's uh, yeah, swimming has just always been in my blood. It's it's, it's a way to you know, just learn, just continue to grow, continue to learn. I feel like there's there's always something I'm trying to figure out, or always a way to get better. It's one of those perfect imperfections. With the Bermuda Bowl Hockey League season resumed, we now bring you the updated standings for the league, point scoring, leaders, and goalkeeper stats. The Guelph Storm are the league leaders with 26 points, Calgary Hitman are in second with 23 points, and the Kelowna Rockets are in third with 21 points. Christopher Merritt from the Guelph Storm is the league leading goal scorer with 17 goals, while Jeff Marat from the Calgary Hitman is in second, finding the back of the net 15 times. J.M. Tremblay from the Guelph Storm is in third with 12 goals. In the assist department, Jeremy Esty from the Red Deer Rebels is leading the league with 15, while Ross Ruffinage from the Calgary Hitman is in second with 14 assists. Merritt and Andrew Boner from the Rochester Rails are tied for third with 13 assists. In the goalkeeping department, James Hall from Ramowski Oceanic is the leader with giving up only two goals per game, while Dave McPhee is averaging 2.36 goals per game against for the Guelph Storm. Andrew Marcus from the Kelowna Rockets is the averaging 2.69 goals per game. Jamin Hopkins represented Canada's men's under-18 red team in a round-robin tournament in San Diego against the USA. In their opening game, Canada's under-18 red team lost to USA's blue team 40-13. to Hopkins would kick a conversion in the game. In their second game, the Canadian under-18 red team and the USA red team would finish deadlock at 20-20. Hopkins was also involved in the scoring with a conversion and a penalty kick. David Patrick's University of California Riverside men's basketball team's two-game win streak was ended as they fell 82-64 to conference top team UC Irvine. In commercial league bowling action at the Warwick Lanes, it saw the league leaders BPS Blue Lanterns go down 3-1 to BTC. Second place Secret Weapons defeated the Spinners 4-0, while the third place team Pinpushers defeated We Do It Big 4-0. Sweet Life got by Sunset 3-1, while the Braves defeated the Superstars 3-1, and the BLDC 10-Pin Mafia defeated Cool Runnings 3-1. In Mixed Majors Bowling League action, the Unpredictables defeated the Minimax Forwarders 15-5, the Mix-Ups defeated the Fight Back 12-8, while the Untouchables defeated the Spirit Chain. 17 to 3. The Activators defeated the Warriors 15 to 5, and the Troublemakers got by Movers and Shakers 16 to 4. I'm Earl Baisden with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports. And last but not least, the Bermuda Union of Teachers will be celebrating their 100th anniversary starting this Friday, February 1st, with a host of events. Mike Sharp tells us more. This weekend, we'll see historic events take place with speeches, marches, celebrations, and a gala dinner. The BUT's General Secretary, Mike Charles, said that funds raised over the weekend will go towards scholarships. On Friday, uh, the 1st of February, we begin the, the day with uh, a ceremony at the graveyard because that's where the, this union was started. It was after the death of one of our uh, educators back then that our four founding fathers, well, mothers and fathers, got together and decided that they had to do something. Because in those days, because of segregation, 
um, when a teacher died, a school died, because you know back then it, it, people had teachers had 40 or 50 kids, and that was a school. It appears that teachers began passing away frequently during segregation. Hence, the union was formed. They were losing these people. Um, it seems like in, in, with um, in succession. Regularity. In regularity, that's the word, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, they thought that they had to do something. Mm -hmm. So these founding fathers got together and decided to, that they have to come together. And that was the start of the Bermuda Union of Teachers. On Friday morning at 8.30, the ceremony begins, followed by march through the city of Hamilton. Mr. Charles said the BUT have led a nomadic life with offices in five locations. The march will end at City Hall and a proclamation will be read. What is the lineup of events at City Hall? We have a choir that's going to sing a choir of teachers. We are hoping to have a hundred. I don't know how many voices we have. We have some of our sister unions from abroad are going to be here. Mm -hmm. um, the National Education uh, Association, the NEA in, from the United States. We are going to have the Caribbean Union of Teachers president is going to be here. So he will say a few words. So yes, we will have a real good presentation. From and that's our program for this evening. I'm Jasmine Patterson. Thanks for watching. Good night. Jasmine Patterson's wardrobe and makeup is provided by Gibbons Company. On the CBS Evening News this Wednesday, more records fall as an epic cold snap hits its low points and is not about to leave. The deadliest deep freeze in a generation. It feels like 30 to 60 below. Dozens of cars were involved in a pileup in central Pennsylvania. Even though I'm layered, it don't matter. This is extreme.